Kelvin Kiptum just did something unbelievable. In his third ever marathon, he crushed the previous marathon world record that was held by the marathon goat Eliud Kipchoge. As a coach, physio and athlete myself, that made me very curious about his training. I found this article where Kipton's coach reveals his training regime, and I was a bit shocked when I saw it, because after being a coach and physio for a decade I've seen a lot of different uh, training programs, and a lot of crazy ones as well. But when I saw this, it was almost hard to believe that uh, someone can survive this kind of training. But I guess we will have to trust his coach for providing the correct information. And even though I have hard to believe that someone can survive a training regime, like this, I think all of us can learn something from his training. So I have written down some key takeaways, but first let's talk about what he actually does in training or what his coach claims that he does in his training. He structures his training when preparing for a marathon over a four month period. His coach says that the first month is a lot of strengthening and he runs around 225 kilometers per week or 140 miles during this period, which is a lot of mileage for sure, but it is after that first month that it becomes really crazy. During that period he runs up to 300 kilometers or 186 miles per week, which is just an insane training volume to withstand over time. For reference, Eliud Kipchoge, the previous world record holder, is known to run up to 220 kilometers or 136 miles per week, which is a lot, but it's actually only about 70% of Kipton's training volume. But what I found the most fascinating with Kipton's training is not just how much he runs, it is the kind of sessions he does week to week. Let's have a look at what they say is a typical week in his training. So he starts the week with running at a for him easy jogging pace of one and a half hours in the morning. And then he does another easy jogging session for 45 minutes in the afternoon. But it should be said that for him easy jogging can be as fast as 340 per kilometer or 554 mile pace. But I guess that makes sense that is still easy when your marathon pace is 251 per kilometer. Although I don't think I would call the 340 pace jogging. <laughs> this is what his easy pace uh, looks like. On Tuesday he does a track or fart leg session. For example, 3 minutes fast, 1 minute slow for 15 repetitions with warm up and cool down. I'm guessing this is not all out effort, but more closer to threshold work. Otherwise I don't understand how he survives these weeks. Or I, I don't understand it now either, but we will get to that. In the afternoon he does just easy jogging or, or let's call it an easy running session of 45 minutes. Wednesday is the same uh, easy day as on Monday, one and a half hours of easy running in the morning and then 45 minutes easy in the afternoon. So the first days contains a lot of volume but nothing crazy. The rest of the week building on these already high volume days is what uh, shocked me. So on first day he does what they call the first hard day of the week, meaning a really hard long run, well over one and a half hours at close to marathon pace. I don't know what they mean with close to marathon pace. Since he trains at the high altitude, I find it very hard to believe that they are able to do these sessions that close to his insane marathon pace, but maybe rather close to marathon effort at that altitude, so maybe something a bit more than three minutes per kilometers. And doing a hard long run like that is of course great marathon training, but it is also really tough on your body. And normally hard long runs like these are well spread out and you often take some easier days to recover from it. But just look at the rest of this week. Yeah, he rests that afternoon and on Friday he does another one of these easy double run days. But then already on Saturday he does another workout day with fart leg or track work followed by an easy run in the afternoon. And here comes the thing that shocked me. Already on Sunday he does another one of these really hard long runs, this time even a bit longer, and sometimes almost up to the full marathon distance. So he ends up running about 14 hours a week, which is not that unusual or insane, but it is how much of it that is at this really high effort and these brutal long runs that is does two, two of every week. 
that it's just hard to believe that he can recover and continue doing another week of this. Okay, so what can we more amateur runners learn from this marathon stars training? So Kiptum clearly runs a lot, and in a way it makes sense. He's reaching new levels in human performance, so it's not strange he's also pushing his training to new heights. And to me as a coach, the clearest connection of how good of a runner you are is simply how much you run. So with this thinking, why doesn't everyone run 300 kilometers a week? Well, that's when I put on my physiotherapist hat and have to say that it is very hard and probably impossible for most of us to build up to a point where you can withstand that kind of training week after week without getting injured or overtrained. And even Kipton's coach expresses some worries that Kipton is training a bit too much and is worried he will not be able to last as long as an athlete with this tough training. But at least for now, looking at Kipton's results, he seemed to have found a balance that works for him and he's done what it takes to be able to handle that kind of training. So if you really want to improve and become a better runner, I think the first thing you should ask yourself is how can I run more but still stay healthy and injury free? And the number one way to do this that I'm sure Kiptum also has done is to slowly build up your running volume over years. And another way of being able to handle a lot of training is to have a lot of focus on just the running. According to Kiptum's coach, he only runs, eats and sleeps. This is not so easy for most of us if you have kids and work and other life responsibilities. But I think all of us, if we want to make running and uh, a healthy life a priority, can have a better focus and prioritize it more. Maybe skip one hour in front of the TV to more training or an extra hour of sleep if you need to recover. Even though Kiptum is still young, it seems like he has been running a lot and been really active since he was a kid. His coach first met him when Kiptum was a child, when he was an athlete himself, and he said that when they did hill running sessions in the forest near Kiptum's home, he was small but full of them running barefoot, after he had been tending the goats and the sheep. Being so active and even running barefoot from an early age makes me think that that might have something to do with why he can handle so much training today. So if you want to run a lot, I think you should look a bit further ahead in time and have some patience. Because although most of us are in a hurry to improve, it might take at least five years of slowly progressing and letting your bones, muscles and tendons adapt and get strong enough to handle the training volumes you actually want to run. And if you rush it, increasing your training too fast, you will most probably get injured and it will take even longer to get to a point where you can run as much as you want to. The most important training principle that I talk a lot about here on this channel is that you get good at what you train at. And this Kiptum seems to take very seriously. Because what is the most relevant training you can do to become a great marathon runner? It is of course to do long runs close to your marathon effort. It doesn't get more specific than that. But then again, this is probably also the toughest workout for your body and when it comes to recovery time and injury risk. But he has found a model where he can do a lot of the most relevant training, so I think this is something all of us can think of. What kind of training sessions are the most relevant for the thing I'm training for? And how can I structure my training and my weeks so that I can do as much of that as possible? Looking at the information Kipton's coach provided about a typical week, all of the training seems very straightforward and a lot of the days look exactly the same. I think some coaches and athletes sometimes try to overcomplicate things by making these fancy workouts with lots of different paces, rest times and interval lengths. You don't need fancy sessions to get fast. Running works in itself and if you find the kinds of intervals and workouts that you like and work for you and that you also can compare from week to week, you don't have to make it more complicated than that. 
This is something I have seen a lot also when I have looked into the training of the amazing track runner Jakob Ingebrigtsen. He seems to do a lot of the same workouts over and over year after year and it seemed to work pretty well. Here you can see a video where I researched and tried to copy the Ingebrigtsen training. Train smart, have fun and I will see you in the next video.